Keys. Joining us now, ranking member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Great to have you here, sir, as we await the president there Thanks. at NATO headquarters in Brussels. Uh, it's just after 8 o'clock p.m. local time there. Uh, talk to us about your expectations for the president meeting with world leaders, obviously highly anticipated with meeting with Vladimir Putin happening on Wednesday. Your expectations for the week? You know, I think uh, I was pleased to see they focused a lot on China. Uh, and, but nothing really concrete came out of that. In fact, the only thing I saw concrete was a recommendation that the WHO, World Health Organization, investigate once again the lab in Wuhan, which we now believe is a source of COVID-19. I don't think this investigation can be done properly with the WHO, who is headed up by Director General Tedros, who is a hand-picked puppet of President Xi and has demonstrated his ability over the last year and a half to cover everything up um, and never wor uh, warn the public about a pandemic. Um, and the cover-up was massive, Sandra, yeah. and uh, many details there, but a massive cover-up. I don't trust them to be responsible for this important investigation. Hey, Congressman, it's John Roberts here. Thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate it. On the subject of Russia, you said that it is time for the United States and the Biden administration to hit back against these bad actors who are hacking into some of our critical infrastructure, uh, even though it's privately owned. What do you believe the United States needs to do? What kind of tools could it employ to try to exact some damage against these people? Well, remember, uh, several of these attacks were nation state sponsored by Russia, the Russian Federation itself. Do so we have Putin proof of that? Uh, of, of course, the, the, the uh, solar winds attack, the uh, USAID attack. Um, oh, I thought the, you meant the latest ones. Yes, and so um, anytime you have a nation state attack, I think our nation should respond in, in kind. I think they've gotten away with this for way too long. Colonial Pipeline was a, a Russian organized mafia, which I believe is integrated with the oligarchs and Putin himself probably has tacit approval of that. So I hope the president can bring this up with Putin that if you can't stop these attacks, we're going to have to start responding. Once we do the attribution to find out where the attacks are coming from, uh, that we are going to hit you back uh, in, in kind because they've been getting away with this for way too long. Congressman, assess the threat that they pose to us today, considering the most recent attacks, not nation sponsored, state sponsored, but uh, obviously Russian groups uh, that we know of. There, we saw them hit the, 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 the food sector. We saw them hit the energy sector. We know we're vulnerable in so many other areas. So what would you say the level is of that threat today? Oh, it's very high. And we're hit every day with ransomware attacks uh, in the hundreds uh, this year, billions of dollars. Uh, it's just Colonial Pipeline was a very uh, high profile attack because it was a pipeline from New York to Houston. And I would say the irony here is that President Biden issued a national interest waiver to allow the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, Putin's pipeline, I call it, to actually be built into Europe to make uh, Europe uh, dependent on Russian energy, while at the same time Russia hits the colonial pipeline and President Biden shuts down the Keystone pipeline. To me, this is pipeline hypocrisy at its worst. Mm. Congressman, uh, we do know that on Wednesday, President Biden is going to hold a solo news conference, unlike the one that President Trump held alongside Vladimir Putin in the last U.S.-Russia summit uh, in Helsinki. There are some people who say that Biden is right to not give uh, Putin an elevated platform and be on the same stage as him. But others are suggesting that having a dual conference, press conference, with, uh, with Putin would give Biden the opportunity to publicly be very tough with the Russian leader. Where do you come down on that? I, I agree. It would give him an opportunity to come out, you know. He's, he's, he's said a lot of things, but has, we haven't seen a lot of action. And I think that those comments would be very powerful if he said it directly to Mr. Putin. I think he's, uh, he's running uh, weak on the issue. He's not going into this summit and this particular meeting with Putin uh, from a, 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 a position of strength but rather of weakness because he's already given him so many concessions, whether it be Nord Stream 2 to New Start, to his position in the Ukraine, to sanctions. Um, pretty much the price of admission on this ticket was very high, and I don't think the United States got a lot out of it. Congressman, we await uh, the president. Um, as we await the president, going back to your words on China, here's the Wall Street Journal, uh, Wall Street Journal headline this morning. Who's on first? Again, the G7 statement. 
on COVID's origin is feckless multilateralism. Uh, there are obviously huge questions heading into all of these meetings, and especially when it comes to the origins of the COVID pandemic. Just characterize for us what you've seen from the president so far, how you expect him to handle these meetings, and what his message so far has been to these world leaders. Well, yeah, I'd like to see more than just talk. I'd like to see action. I'm all for working with our NATO allies and G7 partners, but, you know, President Trump talked about America first, and I think it's important we see concrete actions come out of these summits and not just pleasantries. And, uh, and so uh, with respect to the comment on the WHO and the New York Times article, I, I think it's spot on that we're repeating the same mistakes here. It's kind of like the definition of insanity, uh, doing the same thing over and over. They've demonstrated they're incapable of a, a real investigation into this lab. And I think uh, we need to have a more serious uh, one to get to the bottom of this, which, Sandra, we may never get to the bottom of it, because I believe that, that President Xi and the CCP have destroyed uh, most, if not all, that evidence. The, the Communist Party of China took a page out of Vladimir Putin's playbook. Remember when the G7 uh, a couple of years ago was very tough on Russia, and Putin said, oh, that's just a small handful of countries who think they run the world. My focus is on the bigger group, that is the G20. The Chinese Communist Party basically said the same thing in response to this G7 communique that came out yesterday from Cornwall, saying, look, it's just a handful of countries. We're really focused on the G20. I mean, China knows how to work the PR machine here to their, to their advantage. And the fact that countries like, like Germany, like France, want these trade deals with China, do you expect that this communique that they came out with is going to have any teeth at all? No, I don't think so at all. This is platitudes. Uh, as you point out, uh, Germany, Italy, to some extent the French, that they, they want to go soft on, on China. For, I don't know, understand why. Uh, but I think the world deserves an answer as to what happened to cause COVID-19. And as this additional information tends, uh, is continuing to come out um, you know, from that lab itself, and particularly this uh, genetic manipulation of the virus being far more lethal than, say, SARS or MERS, and the fact the military is in that lab since uh, 2017 and then was eventually uh, taken over in January 2020 by the uh, general in charge of the Kim Bio program in the PRC. These things are very, very disturbing, and we deserve answers. Congressman, I appreciate you joining us. I know it's a busy day for you, busy week on the Hill. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Sandra. Thanks, John.